Okay, folks, since there's so much talk about iOS 18, I've decided to show you a bit of its beta version, how it was tested, and what we can probably expect from the new features of iOS 18. Honestly, I don't want to influence you too much at the beginning of the video, so I'll share my thoughts at the end. In the meantime, feel free to go wild in the comments with your opinions, folks. Let's begin by mentioning that moving from the iOS 18 developer beta to the public beta, which came out on Monday, is quite seamless. Overall, it seems a stable upgrade with more customization options and some cool features that I guess users will likely notice and appreciate. However, I think it won't feel like a major change until the exciting Apple intelligence features are available, and the wait for those might take some time. There are some clear and useful changes though, such as the ability to almost completely customize the home screen and organize apps on any page. The grid layout remains, meaning app icons can be moved around and widgets resized on the home screen, but apps can't be placed between rows or columns. Now, while it's now easier to move apps to avoid blocking the wallpaper image, a moved app will still align with apps below, above, or beside it. Additionally, folks, apps can't be skewed to a 45 degree angle. You know, I didn't think this level of customization was expected, but you should also know that there are still some limitations. What I mean by this is that widgets can be resized and apps moved around, but as I just said, there's some stuff that you can't actually do. Then the new endlessly customizable control center seems to offer pages of personalization, though it's easy to get carried away. At one point during the beta test, all core control center options were moved to the second page, resulting in a blank control center when swinging down from the upper right corner. It took some effort to move everything back to the first screen as there doesn't appear to be a reset option or something like that. A cool thing though folks, the update to the Photos app is exciting because it lets you search using more natural phrases, so I guess finding photos will definitely be better, and we won't have to struggle as much to find the right keywords when searching for specific items in our pictures. However, the system needs to index all photos for this feature to work, so I suppose you can already guess what I'm about to mention now folks. Privacy. I mean, I think it's pretty clear by now, the more AI advances, the more delicate its relationship with our privacy and data becomes. The issue here is simple. If we want to be able to search through our photos using keywords like we do with Google, we have to grant the AI permission to access our photos. This doesn't just apply to photos, however, but also to situations where we use GPS and more. For example, if it gets to the point where Siri can really recommend the next album from a band we don't even know yet, but that Siri thinks we might like, now how would Siri know that we'd like an album from a band we don't know yet? How can it read our minds? Well, it doesn't. Simple folks, Siri can scan our Spotify playlist, our YouTube history, our chats where we discuss music preferences with friends, etc. You see, all this is delicate territory, but it's probably a necessary step to create truly autonomous agents. Anyway, folks, back to iOS 18. I think it's pretty cool that features previously hidden under search are now part of the main screen, and the recent days carousal seems pretty nice. Then iOS 18's Messages app introduces some updated reactions that look really, really nice. But you know, folks, I guess the anticipation is high for Genmoji, which basically are AI-generated emojis, which will be available once Apple intelligence is fully implemented. Now, a particularly useful feature in the iOS 18 public beta seems to be iMessage scheduling. Now, if you ask me, I think this ability to schedule messages could be useful for professionals in situations like newsletters or stuff like that, as well as for amateurs who might be starting a project or a startup or something similar. Some additional interesting details about messages is that the next OS will introduce messages via satellite to many iPhones. This feature operates similarly to Apple's emergency SOS via satellite, introduced with the iPhone 14 and 15 series. While Emergency SOS allows for making emergency calls without a signal, messages via satellite will enable sending messages to anyone, even without a signal. This means users can update their spouse or parents about their camping trip without needing a cellular connection. Additionally, folks, Apple briefly mentioned the inclusion of RCS, rich communication support, in messages. Then, folks, get this. It's now possible to lock apps behind Face ID if you want more privacy for certain specific apps. Another interesting thing is that game mode, which reduces background processes to prioritize gaming, seems to activate automatically when playing a game. 
Anyway, I guess it's difficult to really discern any performance impacts. So uh, as you already know, the A17 Pro running iPhone 15 Pro already performs excellently. Now, I don't know why, but some of the mail organization updates, such as new folders, aren't ready yet. But you know, the new passwords app has proven to be more useful than expected. It seems to offer one of the clearest overviews of password management because it provides easy access to details about all passwords, including those at risk and for those frequently used Wi-Fi networks. I really think this app is likely to become an essential tool and personally, I already fully appreciate iOS's native password manager. Another pretty funny thing is that during this beta test, a lot of time was spent searching for subtle changes. Then it turned out that pressing any physical button on the iPhone makes the nearby screen area push in, which gives the impression of squeezing the display. It's a fun little update. The flashlight also seems to have gone through a complete redesign. I'm not sure how often people will use the new beam control features, but the redesign looks impressive and well done. Now, folks, one of the most surprising updates in iOS 18 is the addition of Math Notes, a feature initially expected only for iPad OS 18. Basically, and I think this is pretty cool and useful, in the Notes app on the iPhone, users can open math notes, write math equations, and see the results appear in what looks like their own handwriting as soon as an equal sign is added. But despite the iPhone not supporting the Apple Pencil, math problems can be scratched out with a finger. The good news is that iOS 18 seems to understand even the worst handwriting, so if you're anything like me, <laughs> you're in luck. Anyway, I'm sure that Math Notes showcases Apple's machine learning capabilities at their best, rather than Apple intelligence. Now, I know what I'm about to say next is a little bit saddening, but the iOS 18 public data does not include new Siri features, chatbot capabilities, text suggestions, or image playground. These and other generative AI features, which will ultimately define iOS 18, are not yet available. But do take comfort, dear listener. When asked if any Apple intelligence is included in the iOS 18 public beta, Apple confirmed that Apple intelligence will be available for beta testing sometime this summer, which could mean any time from now until late September. My guess, I think this could be included in later public beta updates or might coincide with the release of the anticipated iPhone 16 in September. Overall, folks, the iOS 18 public beta can be seen as a polished work in progress with many promising features on the horizon. Anyway, I think it's not necessary to rush to install it on the current best iPhone today, but perspectives might change once the first Apple intelligence features begin to roll out. To sum it all up, I have to say that this iOS 18 beta has really fascinated me. Some features are really cool and useful, like being able to do math in the Notes app, locking apps with Face ID, and even the revamped flashlight looks, well, looks absolutely awesome. Regarding other things, like the improved search and photos, the improvement itself intrigues me a lot, but as always, there's the privacy issue to be considered. And this is where I want you guys to come in. Let me know what you think about this because I believe it's crucial to our future approach to AI in our daily lives. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Don't miss the recommended videos. And as always, see you in the next one, folks. You all take care.